So I was chilling in my room, casually scrolling through Reddit a couple of days ago, and I stumbled across an Oscars post with an interesting picture. This fabulous picture of Billy Porter in an effing gown. And I was like, oh, 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 yes. After falling over it for a while, I thought that was the end of that until I went to sleep. I had a dream of myself with this gorgeous ensemble on, bared and all. And that's when I knew I had to go broke trying to make it. I set off to the fabric store to get my supplies and there's a reason these things are made for celebrities and not poor people. This fabric was not cheap at all. I wanted structure for the jacket so I was opting for upholstery fabric with a velvet look to it but both stores only had a suede finish. I decided to get stretch velvet and then just use fusible interlacing in the areas that needed the structure. So we got this one and you see how much better it is from the microfiber you can get. Look at the sheen of it but it's stretched so we're going to have to add interfacing and and um, some stiffness to the jacket part of it. But look at that sheen. Good stretch. Maybe it could work in my favor for the top part. So you don't have to do too much patterning. Yes. Oh, look, look at that. Oh, yeah. Uh, all right. Yeah. yeah. Woo. Okay. I spent all my money on the velvet. So for the inside shirt, I'm going to have to upcycle one of the button downs I had here chilling. Tried on the top and decided where I wanted it to fit me better, so I put the pins there. I removed the sleeves and shortened the shirt and we hemmed it, but saved the bottom for the ruffles. I also redrew the armholes and brought in the side seams for a better fit. I then removed the collar and stand and copped it on a new piece of paper to make a taller stand. I then cut out some strips for the ruffles. This is going to be interesting. This is going to be very interesting. Okay, I need some... Hmm. Hmm. Okay, I need... I don't know how we're going to do this. The sleeve and the lack of and the lack of fabric that we have. Okay, whatever. Okay, let's just let's just focus on the the color right now, and then we we'll work on the sleeves afterwards. Okay, 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 okay. okay. We got this. We got this. We got this. I then folded the ruffles in half, pinned it down, ironed it so it had a nice fold, and then I did a basting stitch on the raw edge of it with two long ends. I pulled one end and that created the ruffles. I then got the collar and put the ruffles on the top collar with right sides together and I pinned it. Then I put the under collar over the ruffles sandwiching them and sewed along the seam allowance and the outer edges. Then trimmed the edges, turned it inside out, ironed it and reattached it to the neckline of the shirt. right here in this stitch. I then top stitched the collar, did the buttonhole, reattached the button and this is how the collar looks. Then we have to figure out what to do with the blast devil sleeve because I ran out of fabric and I can't do what his thing looks like. So we screwed half-ish. Best thing about it is that you can't see the shirt underneath. You can just see the little pieces sticking out. So we can use that in our favor and just just add ruffles to the bottom. Uh, yes, that's what we can do. Okay. I cut some more strips for the ruffles at the bottom of the cuff, doing the same thing we did to the collar, and I reattached it to the underside of the cuff, and this is how it looks. I reattached the sleeves, and the shirt is done. All right. Okay. So. All right. All right. All right. So we are finished the shirt. I thought that was going to be the easiest one, but it was not. Okay. 
Okay. Okay. So now let's just do the hardest one next. You know, so we can actually feel like we accomplished something in life. So the jacket. The jacket. So we're actually going to make a jacket from scratch because it has to be velvet. Alright, so if you feel that I am drafting a new pattern for this jacket, you're very wrong. This will no way, in no way, be a tutorial because that's for a whole other video. So, yeah, I went to my cupboard and I got this Forever 21 blazer that I never wore. But it's similar up here to the one King Billy was wearing. This is what we're tracing. So we're going to trace the lapel. We're going to trace the shoulders, the sleeves. From here, we're probably going to have it short right here. There, and we're going to have to... We're not going to trace this. We're going to have to add a pocket about here. And... Yeah. Three hours later. Alright, this is what I came out with. So now let's cut this in the interfacing. The lining fabric, the satin, and the velvet. What to do? What did I get myself into? I have my lining pieces, I have my velvet pieces, I have my satin pieces. I already put the interfacing on the satin pieces, and I guess I'm just going to assemble everything together. I'm going to assemble the shoulders of everything first. Um, so I pinned everything that needed to be pinned. Um, I pinned the darts for the front. I got the belt pocket that's for the jacket and I folded it so right sides are facing and I'm gonna edge stitch or do like a quarter stitch on both sides. Um, this is for the pockets too. The lining sleeves, I pinned them already, so that's in that. Um, the collar, I pinned the collar to the stand. This is the shell sleeve, in that and that. And I pinned the center back to the side back for both the shell and the velvet. Okay, not, 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 not. For both the velvet, I pinned the center back to the side back for both the velvet and the linen. And now I'm going to sleep. Good night. 12 seconds later. I folded a little piece for the belt pocket and I, well, I trimmed off the corners first and then I marked it on the front of the shirt. And yeah, I just, I had no time to do a tutorial for this. I was getting so tired. So this is me adding the belt pocket to the front of the shirt. I sewed the facing to the lining at the front and sewed it to the back lining. Then I sewed the top collar and stand together and I sewed the shoulder of both the lining and the shell. I sewed the top collar to the neckline there and then I put the under collar on top of the top collar and I sewed it to the notches. Then I sewed the front of the facing and the shell together. Showing all the edges. Right. Y'all ready for this? Okay, so look at this notch. This notch I managed to like get done. Okay. Besides the unraveling. But this notch. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> and because it was unraveling, I had to keep going further and further in, and this is what happened. And there's no going back from this. I don't know why I'm ironing this part. I really don't have any time to sit down and do this over, so we're gonna just Google ways to embellish jackets and we're gonna just like stick a big flower or something over this. Alright, okay, feel. The satin that I use unraveled from the edges like nobody's business. It frayed so much. After I cried for a bit, I decided to do the button hole and the button, so I. Well, of course I sewed up side scenes and I finished the jacket. So now I'm just trying to do this fabric button thing here, as you can tell. I know I need a kit, but it's one o'clock in the morning and there's no kit here. The girl at the store didn't tell me I needed a kit. 
and they got all excited because they was like, oh, so all you have to do is press it. And she's like, yeah. And I'm like, oh, great. And now I'm looking at it and I'm like, there's no way I can press this in by myself. But, okay. Okay, I think this way. Maybe too much rubber. And we're going to use some contraption that I have. This, to see if this will help push it in or mash up my stuff. Come on, you could do it. Okay, that's not going to work. That's not going to work at all. How am I supposed to do this? Let's try again. <gasps> I got it work! I don't know what this is. Okay, whatever, I don't care. Yes! We got a button. We got a button. Ah, la, 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 la. Ah, la, 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 la. I touched the button and the jacket is done. On to the best part, the gown. The rectangle is my chest measurement plus around 2 inches and then I just drew a line about 5 eighths of an inch away from the two ends going straight down. I put it on, pinned the front where I drew the lines and then I turned it to the back. And then I pinned up the side seams and the bust area, ensuring everything is nice and fitted. I then marked how long I want it to be and then I removed the rectangle using the first pins we placed on the lines at the back, marked out the bust pins and then the side seams and redrew the lines put them on paper and cut them apart. I sewed all the seams for the lining and shell and then I ironed the lining. For the skirt, I just draped some fabric over this poofy thing and pinned it and yeah. <laughs> this for the side seams, I basted the stitch down and then I took it to the sewing machine and stitched it. I added the basting stitch at the waist to create ruffles and I pulled the line and created the ruffles as you can see. I then attached the shell fabric to the waist of the skirt and I added bone in to the lining of the top. Trimmed off any excess ruffles at the waist and then I put in my invisible zipper. I attached the lining to the shell at the top, opened the seam. I did a stay stitch to keep the seam allowance on the inner part of the dress and then I slip stitched the lining to the shell and then I was done.